Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode here on Passy. Just getting an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for joining us today. How's it going? It's good to see you guys. I literally have, um, I, I literally got out of bed. Come and uh, do this quickly. Um, I start a new job tomorrow and I was going to be missing out on the Microsoft and Bethesda conferences because I need to get up in the morning. So I kind of turned my brain off, chose not to get involved. <laughs> I didn't want to know if anything really exciting happened, but one of the most interesting things happened during the Microsoft conference that um, a lot of people are not excited from it from reading the, the quick tweets and stuff that I saw earlier on. But Fantasy Star Online 2 is coming to the West on Xbox and PC in 2020, and there's a trailer out for the announcement. But we'll talk a bit more about game, we'll talk about more about PSO, we'll talk about the history of the game, my history of the game, anything else with it um, in just a second because I want to watch this two minute trailer and then we'll jump straight into it. So um, yeah, that, that's the big news. PSO2 is coming to Xbox and to PC in 2020. And there's, there's <laughs> this game is six years old. The six year old game that's available on the PS4 already, but only in Japan and Hong Kong. And of course it's on uh, PC in Asia as well. So god damn. If this, if this will make it easy for me to try and play this game, I am so goddamn on board. But let's check out this trailer. <laughs> so specific, launches in the West by Xbox One. It's like, <laughs> this game has been begged for for ages and this uh, like it's just the fact we're only getting around and seeing it now i uh, this i i've seen this I've, I've actually seen this parts of this trailer before as well of crossplay i'm curious to know what way are they going to go back to like a couple of years back on the server because the, the biggest problem that we actually had with things like fantasy star universe back in the day was that the um there was power there was no parity between the western servers and the asian servers that's the, and I remember this trailer. This is whenever I started playing on the Japanese servers. Uh, all the bosses in Epic Battle. Yeah, all, there's a lot of stuff in there. Like I said, it's, can you imagine coming into an MMO six years late? Like, that's the big thing. Free to play. Um, but coming into an MMO six years after it's actually started up. And going like, well, let's try and start it from the beginning. It's, it would be like somebody coming into Final Fantasy XIV now. With three expansions added to it. <laughs> you know? Oh. God damn! So they are, they're definitely, they're showing stuff from many, many, many of the trailers, so I've got a feeling that they're going to start us up with the, uh, on, on current, ongoing content, just with an English patch. Because fans have actually patched the PC version to the point where, God. Uh, <laughs> man! Uh, I want to put that trailer back on again, and just get to the actual title card at the end. Um, the, um, I, I I just talked straight. In the end, if I didn't care, it's like, too happy, too goddamn happy about this one. Um, yeah. Let's see. Just get the trailer. We'll get we'll get the logo up on screen, and there we go. That's what we want. <laughs> so I can switch back over to here. Um, so my history with the Final Fantasy Star franchise is um, starting with Fantasy Fantasy Star on the Mega Drive, and then Fantasy Star online on the Dreamcast, then a little bit of Blue Burst on the GameCube, and then Fantasy Star Universe on the Xbox 360. So for me, uh, and, then that, and that was that was my predominant time with the game. Before that, I played all of them just for the fact of, um, you know, you pass by a Japanese RPG, if you're in a Japanese RPG, you're like, oh, the Fantasy Star series, yeah, yeah. They were fantasy, and then they actually went sci-fi. Yeah, I, I kind of like Star Ocean a bit more, like, you know, like in the earlier ones. Um, Fantasy Star Online was a great online experience just for the fact of it being horribly broken for how much people cheated on it but um on the original dreamcast it was a groundbreaking experience to enjoy um i tied up the phone lines plenty on our 56k modems back then and um ever since then uh, i've kind of followed the series quite uh avidly to make sure i could keep track of getting a chance to play it every once in a while up to the point of where fantasy star universe came out on the xbox 360 uh 2004 2000? was it even that was it wasn't even uh, two, 2004 2005 maybe it was actually around about then. And I got horribly, horribly addicted to that game. I was paying my monthly fees for it. I was playing it constantly. Um, I was actually meant to be working my ass off towards my degree. I didn't. I spent more time writing out spreadsheets and 
running in a store in that game and just mining the game for information constantly whenever I should have been working on my degree. And uh, it, it, it's a it's a fond memory, but also a sad memory because I did hold myself back because of it. And my Star Universe and Ambition of the Alumnus, the expansion for that, kind of like invested my life for a few years uh, quite heavily. And whenever the servers finally went down on the Xbox 360, well, well back, um, I was there, hung about whenever the servers went down, and I was like, wow, oh, that's a bit of an end of an era for me. We'll leave it behind and we'll walk away. And obviously, things like Fancy Star Portable, Fancy Star Portable 2, uh, were on the Vita, well, not on Vita, on the PSP. And I have played those as well. Not uh, nowhere near in the same value and experience that I actually had with Fancy Star Universe. Uh, because once I had that, I didn't want to go back to an offline game, really, because of the, what the, the daily grind of that was, quite the communication with other people. Fantasy Star Online came out. Fantasy Star Online Two came out six years ago, um, and whenever I wanted to check it out originally, it was on PC. I wasn't a PC gamer at any in any way, shape, or form at that point. In fact, I wasn't gaming that much at all at that point. I was uh, kind of off. I was off games for a period of time and just kind of like living life. And um, whenever it came around, um, I kind of got back into the PS4, and I heard that the PS4 was going to game. And of course, I checked it out on the Hong Kong servers or the Hong Kong account that I have. Actually, log in, get into Fancy Star Online too, and it was the same experience that I would have had back whenever I first started uh, Fancy Star Universe. It was a bit bewildering, needed to get myself through the menus, going through cutscenes. In fact, there is videos on this very channel. I'll throw them up in the cards above for you to actually check out, and probably in the uh, end card videos of me playing Fancy Star Online here on the channel. So just guy as one of the old F uh, free to play series that I did, and all maybe it was actually free to play, or it could have been. Um, what was it? What was the series I did for actually uh, Asian Asian only games, or it could be under PS freebies? I I'll, I'll remember which one it is whenever I get around to it. But uh, Fantasy Star Online Two kind of got my attention. I enjoyed playing it for a little while. I found a few players that were because it was crossplay between PC and PS4. I found a few players that were actually English players on one of the ships that were playing with a fan translated patch of the game, so that if I was in a party with them, they would be able to explain to me what the fuck's going on. <laughs> but I obviously missed out on a lot of the story that was going on with it, and I played it for maybe a month and a half, two months before I was like, this is the, the wall of text was too high for me to actually invest myself any more in this game, uh, which I'm kind of glad I did because if this game is now, finally, eventually coming out to the West, I want to play it through and enjoy it as a full experience rather than kind of like grinding through it or blasting through it really quickly. Now, the fact that it's actually been announced during the Microsoft conference and it's coming to the West on the Xbox One and on PC is a little bit um frustrating because uh, ps4 it's it's been on the ps4 for years in asian territories and all we needed was just like you're doing it now for another console but i'm assuming microsoft and so much here before backed up the brings truck to say and going like right you don't want to fund running servers for a western audience we'll fund them and probably run them that's probably the reason why it was announced during the microsoft conference if if it is actually just a Western launch on Xbox One in 2020. Uh, it's just going to be launched on that platform for a short period of time, or they were kind of like being a little bit finagly. They were very specific about their phrasing on the actual um, on screen. They actually they were very very specific about the phrasing of what they were going to say when it was getting released in the West. If an English version is available on uh, Asian territories, if they are doing a Hong Kong English version or I could switch the language in the game. I'm going to be sitting with an eagle eye to find out whether or not I can do that because I will immediately jump on on PS4 and play it with my European account on the actual the Hong Kong copy of the game as long as I can switch it over to English. That, that, that's a possibility that could very much occur. If they're going to the bother of translating it and release it in the West and it's not going to be on the PS4 but it is going to be on the Xbox and PC but they've already done the translation anyway. There really isn't any reason for them. The only reason why they're going to say it's like West only for Microsoft, but we can still put our English translation into the Hong Kong version, which would probably be appreciated by some of the users. Um, it's just one of those situations where a lot of games over there can actually have dual language capabilities. They usually end up being Chinese, Korean, uh, or English. They don't do Chinese, Korean, and English. It's rare enough. There's very few games or a few occasions where it does happen or just Chinese, English. So we'll probably get more information about that. I will be... Digging into PSU world and PSO world and all the old forums and websites that have long since gone silent to me. Anyway, I haven't actually been getting updates from them. 
about this but i'm glad to see fancy star online 2 is back and alive for a lot of us that are actually fans from sega uh this this is it's sega are reviving uh an undead franchise it's been living it's been walking along but not for anybody over here for the last six years there's an animated series to go along with this i think there was a manga as well fancy star online 2 has been a uh, ongoing behemoth in japan for a period of time it's six years so why the hell not like i mean essentially if we if we can get that now uh, i've got no complaints uh all the time waited will have been worth it so um yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna chill i'm gonna try and get my heart rate down and my relaxation down because i need to go back to bed prepare for work in the morning but i'm super super excited to see Fantasy star online too being announced um i will uh, guys i will check out the rest of the e3 conferences i will check out the bethesda conference i will check out the microsoft conference i'll dig through and find the things that are of interest i'm hoping to kind of do more of like an e3 compendium of stuff maybe on tuesday or wednesday rather than just going and burning through the conferences for commentary because it's a lot of time to spend whenever i just i'm not going to be awake for them whenever they're live so if they were watching the pros or if i'm watching the post records why not chop out the the effluent that usually happens with a lot of these conferences so um yeah we'll we'll cover all of them ea microsoft bethesda uh squaresoft and uh nintendo over the next few days i think the 11th is actually the last day for conferences so maybe expect some from me routine and if not i will be doing things like this if very specific examples pop up in front of me thank you very much for watching i will see all you dudes in the next video bye